please do not be cynical. I hate cynicism. For the record, it's my least favorite quality. It doesn't lead anywhere. 2010, the year that dared to dream. Or did it? <laughs> Tiger Woods. <laughs> Tiger Woods, dude. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 events of 2010. For this list, we'll be looking at events from each half decade from pop culture, natural disasters, medical breakthroughs, sports, and political happenings, based on their significance at the time and their lasting impact today. We're excluding the Arab Spring protests, which, although they may have started in 2010, the demonstrations, protests, riots, and so on did not truly reach full momentum until 2011. This is part of a series of videos spanning the decades. Why the wait? I'm trying to learn from lessons done in the past, and I just wanted to give her the best chance to, to settle in and, and see what, you know, what happens the other side. Number 10, the sinking of the Chonan warship. <laughs> Although never entirely proven, evidence and intel blamed the sinking of the South Korean Chonan warship in March 2010 on a North Korean torpedo as fired by a sub. The warship took just five minutes to sink, losing 46 lives in the process. While North Korea flatly denied sinking the vessel, the area in which the incident occurred is frequented by North Korean fishers and is very near the Korean border. Additionally, pieces of a North Korean torpedo were found near the ship's wreckage. The UN Security Council has condemned the attack which led to the sinking of a South Korean warship, but falls short of blaming the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Unlike the response to the North's shelling of Yongpyong Island later that year, South Korea was unwilling to chance armed conflict, so instead cut off financial aid to its northern neighbor. We are holding a memorial service here to let our people know the serious threat of North Korean terrorism and the importance of national security. Number 9. The Tonight Show Conflict Hello there, I'm Conan O'Brien. Sorry if I'm a little late. I had a job interview at Lady Foot Locker. In 2009, NBC discovered an issue when it came time to give The Tonight Show to Conan O'Brien. People still watched Leno. When I started this show, my hair was black and the president was white. NBC opted to keep both comics and gave Leno a new, earlier show, which drew in fewer viewers than the dramas it replaced. The quickest fix? Stick Leno back into the 11.35 p.m. time slot and bump Coco to 12.05 a.m. Except Conan wouldn't budge. Fans have even organized Save Coco rallies and vow to follow him wherever he ends up. Leno, meanwhile, had an ironclad pay-and-play contract, meaning O'Brien either had to move or jog on. After less than eight months on the job, Conan walked, with his last Tonight Show airing in late January 2010. Nobody in life gets exactly what they thought they were going to get. But if you work really hard and you're kind, amazing things will happen. Jay returned to The Tonight Show on March 1st. 17 million people watched the Golden Globe Sunday night on NBC. And as a result, today uh, NBC announced we begin airing repeats of the Golden Globe five nights a week at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Number eight, the royal engagement announcement. I've been planning it for a while, but uh, as every guy out there will know, it's, uh, it takes a certain amount of motivation to get yourself going. Both 28, Prince William and commoner Kate Middleton actually became engaged while on vacation in Kenya on October 20th, 2010. But it was only publicly announced on November 16th, 2010. She had caught his eye, it said, at a student charity fashion show. He'd bought a front row seat. The soon-to-be royal couple met in university in 2001, though only made their relationship public in 2005, and briefly split in 2007. When I was um, trying to impress Kate, um, I was trying to cook these amazing fancy dinners, and all that would happen was I'd burn something, something would overspill, something would catch on fire. Prince William presented Kate with his mother's, Princess Diana's, engagement ring, a weighty creation made of a large sapphire and many, many diamonds. Although the pair didn't actually wed until early 2011, the engagement set off a media frenzy. So much so that an actual royal wedding in 2010, that of Swedish Crown Princess Victoria and Daniel Westling, is largely unremembered, at least outside of Sweden. It's obviously a thrill, thank you very much. <laughs> Practicing for long enough. Number seven, the Tiger Woods divorce. A lot has transpired in my life. Um, a lot of ugly things have, have happened. 2010 was not Tiger Woods' year, coming into the year with the world discovering he had no fewer than 14 known mistresses. Woods spent at least 45 days in a sex rehab clinic following a series of affairs, 
despite his marriage to Swedish model Elin Nordegren. Party girls, waitresses, escorts, and strippers all came forward as part-time tiger handlers, while porn star Holly Sampson claimed to have slept with the golfer at his bachelor party. Oh, Tiger Woods. <laughs> tiger Woods. Hi. <laughs> Fellow porn star Jocelyn James even claimed to have been pregnant multiple times by Tiger. He's the one that was married. He's the one that took vows with his wife, Elin. I'm 100% single. Mm -hmm. He pursued me. and It takes know. two to tango, exactly. baby. But the final straw for Elin came in April with the mistress, who also happened to be their neighbor's 21-year-old daughter. A lot of people say, hey, you're the luckiest guy in the world. You're married to a model. Got beautiful kids. I guess that's enough for an average man, but I'm above average. Number six, the Chilean mining accident. By the time of their rescue in mid-October 2010, the 33 miners had been 2,300 feet underground for 69 days in the San Jose copper gold mine. 17 days after the mine collapsed, they had no contact from the world above. But things changed when they attached a note onto a drill bit. The eager crowd was astonished to see a small bag attached. Inside were two notes. The men could not contain their joy. Soon, the miners were supplied food, cameras, Bibles, as well as clothing and sunglasses for their eventual rescue. Trapped in a space about the same size as a studio apartment, the miners were able to access some tunnels for exercise, solitude, and bathroom breaks. Miner Edison Pena even ran several miles a day to keep fit during the Copiapo accident, and in 90-degree heat, no less. Was there a, a, a guy that it was uh, got on everybody's nerves? Like, oh, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Number five: The U.S. diplomatic cables leak. WikiLeaks.org, a whistleblower website, has published what it says are nearly 92,000 official U.S. documents of raw data on the deaths and casualties collected over the past six years. WikiLeaks and founder Julian Assange steadily grew in fame and infamy throughout 2010. The organization made headlines in April of that year by releasing a 2007 video showing a U.S. Apache helicopter killing journalists and civilians. This video put WikiLeaks on the map and showed the real face of war, apathetic teens unaware that they're shooting at real people. July was noted with a release of 92,000 classified American military files from the Afghanistan war. October saw the first of 400,000 Iraqi war logs being released, but it was the November incident that really put WikiLeaks on the wanted list. It is my role to be the lightning rod uh, to, attract, uh, to attract the attacks against uh, the organization for our work. On November 28th, the site released over 250,000 embassy cables sent to the U.S. State Department, known as Cablegate. It was the single largest leak of confidential documents ever sent to the public domain. Every American schoolchild is taught that George Washington could not tell a lie. If citizens in a democracy want their governments to reflect their wishes, they should ask to see what's going on behind the scenes. Number four, the Don't Ask, Don't Tell Repeal Act of 2010. It is the best way to proceed because it provides a sensible balance between the rights of the individual and the needs of our military to remain the world's number one fighting force. Implemented in 1993, the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy was never exactly popular in the LGBT community. I'm here because Don't Ask, Don't Tell is wrong. It's unjust. While it did allow for gays and lesbians to serve in the military, in a way, it also booted them straight out if they were open about their sexual orientation. Combat proficiency matters much more than uh, sexual preference. We are in the middle of war. I mean, the whole, you know, don't ask, don't tell policy is the least, <laughs> the lowest priority in my mind right now. Hotly debated in both the House and the U.S. Senate throughout 2010, the Don't Ask, Don't Tell Repeal Act was signed by President Barack Obama in December of 2010. I am just overwhelmed. Uh, th this is uh, a very good day. The act would formally become law the following September and allowed gays and lesbians to openly serve and allowed formally discharged lesbians and gays to re-enlist. Today, Cope has told us he I might re-enlist. Just because I've been burnt by this policy um, doesn't mean that's been taken out of, out of who I am. I'm still a patriot. I'm still a soldier at heart. 
Number three, the eruption of Eyjafjalla Jökull. Volcanic ash has caused the worst disruption in air travel since 9-11. Although fairly insignificant as far as volcanoes go, Eyjafjalla Jökull nonetheless found a way to wreak havoc in 2010. Despite being tucked away in Iceland, and only of concern to sheep and horses, the volcano managed to disrupt air travel across much of Europe for six days in April, as a result of its multiple eruptions. This came down to the sneaky bugger being parked right under the jet stream and pumping glass-like ash straight into it. Eya flya yakur vol. Eya flya yerkaval. On the less jerk side of things, on March 25th, the volcano allowed scientists to witness the formation of a pseudo crater for the first time ever. Yes, yes. Still glowing slightly. Yay! Got that spot. Number two, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. It started as a fiery accident that led to the evacuation of 115 workers and the search for 11 others who were never found. BP's drilling of an exploratory well off the coast of Louisiana resulted in the worst oil spill in U.S. history in 2010. On April 20th, a leak of oil and gas from an underwater BP pipeline in the well resulted in a fire and explosion that caused the Deepwater Horizon oil rig to sink two days later, on what was, ironically, Earth Day which only underlined the oil spill's environmental impact. We will make BP pay for the damage their company has caused. Leaking for 87 days, the spill saw the release of almost 5 million barrels of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. The spill ultimately killed about 8,000 animals and cost $40 billion in cleanup efforts. To all those affected, I want to say, we are deeply sorry. We're sorry. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Chileans struggled to get out of buildings some in just their pajamas. At a price of $19.6 billion, and now the Cadbury board's blessing, Kraft now becomes the largest confectioner in the world. And $58 million to start this. At $58 million now, at $58 million, at $58 million, $59 million. Number one, the Haiti earthquake. Help is on its way, but for now, Haiti is battling the aftermath of a devastating natural disaster. In mid-January 2010, after the strongest earthquake to hit the Caribbean country in over two centuries, nearly three million people, or one-third of Haiti's population, were left in need of aid. <laughs> More than one million of those were left homeless, while as many as 316,000 people were killed by the quake and its more than 50 aftershocks. There is no help, no hospital, no electricity, nothing. No food, no phone, no food, no water, nothing. Power and communications were down, while roads were blocked and hospitals were destroyed. Damage was especially brutal due to the country's non-existent building codes and unrepaired damage from cyclones in 2008. The hospital ship is a must for us now because some of our hospitals have been affected, collapsed also, so we need that kind of support. Due to Haiti's crippling poverty, G7 nations forgave debts, while an American telethon fronted by Wyclef Jean and George Clooney raised close to $60 million in donations. No We are the ones who make a brighter day, so let's start giving. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the most important event from 2010? For more hashtagging top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Ah, 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 ah,